Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 10th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Indianapolis, Indiana. Xavier today came across a little bit of better than usual email that is spreading TrickBot right now. The email claimed to come from Lloyd's Bank. Now, what made it even more believable is that it actually linked to a domain called LloydsBankDocs.com. The email claimed to link to a document the user had to review. The website popping up when you clicked on the link made it actually look like it is a PDF document. Interestingly, the links actually in this document didn't do anything, but what triggered further action was scrolling down in the document. That triggered a pop-up that would then advise the user to install a plugin, which then led to TrickBot. What makes it probably more likely for users to fall for this kind of phishing attempt is that many legitimate companies are not just using one domain name, but often have multiple domain names that they're using in email links that are derived from their main domain. So something like Lloyd's Bank Docs may very well look plausible and a likely link to show up in email. One problem with third-party browsers like Firefox in Windows has been that it has been difficult to remotely manage uh, these browsers across an enterprise. Well, uh, Firefox is going to fix this in Firefox 60. Firefox 60 is going to include a group policy engine that allows you to manage several security relevant settings in Firefox via group policies. Of course, Firefox has been struggling somewhat for market share in recent years. That's probably one reason why they're implementing these features to gain more of a foothold in enterprises. And for a change, we have an Intel-related security advisory that actually doesn't reveal a new hardware flaw in any of its processors. Instead, this security vulnerability is really more about how operating systems misinterpreted some documentation that Intel published about its debug capabilities. Several operating system vendors like, for example, Microsoft have published fixes this week. The result of this misinterpretation was that an attacker could use operating system APIs in order to gain access to privileged memory. Search.org published an advisory with links to various operating system patches. This affected, for example, Apple. It did affect Microsoft. It also affected FreeBSD, Linux kernels, and a number of other systems. And Microsoft this week announced that it will add JavaScript to Excel. This, of course, has significantly increased the attack surface for Excel. And while this hasn't been implemented yet in the current version of Excel, Microsoft has released a preview version that has JavaScript already enabled. So it only took about a day for someone to port the CoinHive crypto coin miner JavaScript code to Excel and made it possible now to run a crypto coin miner within an Excel spreadsheet. I haven't seen any numbers yet about the performance of this crypto coin miner, but since I expect Excel to use the same JavaScript engine as Microsoft's browsers, it's probably equal to running the JavaScript inside these browsers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.